Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. So today I am back with another author guide. This is another thriller author that I have a very mixed hit or miss relationship with. If you've never read a book by Megan Miranda, she writes thrillers. They usually have some kind of weird element to them. They're not like, her thrillers are not like other thrillers, okay? She's not like other girls. So they're usually pretty unique, but that does not always mean good. Sorry if the angle changed. Cameron just called me to let me know he's getting me vodka on the way home from work. So we love a man who picks up our alcohol purchases for us. Um, anyway, in this video, we're going to be looking at all of Megan Miranda's books, both her YA titles and her adult titles, and I'm going to give you all the dirt on all of them, a synopsis of each of them, and at the end, I'm going to rank them so you can judge which are the best and which ones are going to be worth reading to you. So I'm going to start with her newest release, which is an adult thriller. It's called The Girl from Widow Hills, and it follows a girl who went through a severely traumatic event when she was only five years old. Uh, basically, we're led to believe that she went missing for a while. We don't know if she was kidnapped at the beginning of the book or possibly taken by another force um, such as aliens, ghosts, uh, nature, something like that. Uh, so it's a very interesting, you'll see this as a theme with all of Megan Miranda's thrillers. They have the kind of weird element to them. So we're trying to figure out what happened to her and so are the press because it is the 20th anniversary of her disappearance. So the press are all over her trying to get interviews and they start digging in and realizing that maybe not everything was how she said it was when she was younger and what her family said about her disappearance might not be completely true. So this one is definitely interesting in the beginning and it's very intriguing as well. Like it keeps your attention throughout the book until the last like 80 pages, I would say. It drags a little bit and the reveals aren't as wonderful as I was hoping for when I got to the end. So I just rated this one a three star. I don't think it's a bad book, but it's definitely not something I would run to pick up. Next, we have The Perfect Stranger. And this one is also an adult thriller. It's a newer release. I think it might've come out in 2018, 2017, 2018, somewhere around there. Um, and it follows Lee. Yeah. So she was this hotshot reporter, but something was exposed about her and it basically ruined her entire career. So she ends up moving away from the big city and into a small town to escape her bad press. She ends up moving to this small town because that's where one of her old roommates lives. And one day she's just out, you know, living her life and she comes back, her roommate's missing. And there's also a woman's body found and the body looks just like Leah. So it seems like somebody tried to kill Leah, but ended up killing somebody who just looked like her and her roommate is also missing. So there's kind of two mysteries going on. You're figuring out where the roommate is and who the girl is who's dead and why somebody was trying to kill Leah. So it's very convoluted. It's a great mystery. I honestly love this book so much. I read it in a day just laying by the pool and it's a perfect pool book it's like just drama and twisty and it keeps your attention but it's also not something you have to pay super close attention to you know you can kind of float and then pick it up and then float you know it's not something that's super intellectual but I gave this one five stars I absolutely loved this one now let's get into all the missing girls <sighs> with this one Megan was trying to be innovative with us. It's basically a thriller told in reverse. Like we know what happened to these girls, kind of. It's about two girls that go missing at a fair and we kind of know what happens to them and we're going backwards to try to figure out 
the events that led up to that, but it's really confusing, really convoluted. You really have to pay attention to it. And when I'm reading a thriller, I don't want to do that. I just want to escape into a fun mystery. So this is not something uh, that I enjoyed very much. It was, it was too convoluted for me. I gave it two stars. And the last of Megan Miranda's adult thriller titles is The Last House Guest. This is another great one for reading by the pool. It is set in a little seaside idyllic town, but the town is kind of split in two. So you have the locals who live there year round, and then you have the kind of hoity-toity bougie people who just live there for the summer or just have a summer home there things like that and the main character that we're following was one of the like bougie visitors and she ended up becoming really really close with one of the local girls there growing up because they went every summer and that was just like her summer friend that she saw when she was living at her summer house and it was a great friendship well the girl that she was friends with all those years ago growing up was found dead and people are suspecting our main character for it so she ends up going back and doing her own investigation trying to clear her name and she kind of gets into the shit while she's doing that and finds out things she's not supposed to know it's very exciting this is another one i just devoured in a day it's not the most groundbreaking thriller y'all it's really not but it's that formula of a mystery that just freaking works. I gave it five stars. Now let's go ahead and get into her YA titles. I'm not going to be telling you about her series that she's written. She wrote a YA thriller series and I have not read that so that's not going to be part of the ranking and I don't really have an interest in reading that. I don't like reading series. I'm a standalone kind of girl but I will tell you about the three YA thriller standalones that Megan Miranda has written. The first of which is Fragments of the Lost. This follows a girl whose boyfriend seemingly killed himself and his mother is then forcing the girlfriend to clean out his room because it's too traumatic for her and she blames the girlfriend for his death. Very fucked up situation, I know. So she doesn't believe that he killed himself and she's kind of trying to piece together what actually happened while cleaning out his room. She's looking for evidence, things like that. The ending was just really lackluster for me. It also kind of dragged in the middle and it was just a weird book to read about. Like whose boyfriend's mother would literally blame a girlfriend if the dude killed himself like that? That is unhinged. So I gave this one three stars. It was all right, but I just didn't like the overall concept. For the concept that it was, it was executed pretty well, but eh, it was just eh. Next, we have The Safest Lies. So this follows a girl who ends up getting into a very traumatic car accident uh, and it basically disrupts her entire life because she ends up surviving and she's put in the newspaper for her town. Like, wow, this really amazing like firefighter saved this girl and she's alive and wow but it also prints the name of her and her family and little does this girl know but her mom is actually in some shady business and when her name is announced in the paper it causes some alarm bells to be rung so her mom lives in this very sheltered lifestyle she's told her daughter that she lives this way without leaving the house with order ordering their groceries, with doing all of these weird things to keep them safe uh, because she's paranoid that she's going to be taken again because she was actually abducted as a teenager and that is how she got her daughter, her abductor, actually raped her and got her pregnant, but she ended up escaping. I feel like this might be loosely based on the Elizabeth Smart case, which is one of my favorite true crime cases and why I was really drawn to this book, but can't say for sure. Anyway, that is the reason that her mother has given her for living this very sheltered, weird lifestyle. But once she uh, is in the paper, her safety is threatened and everything goes to shit. This book was super fast paced and really good for like the first 45%. So, so, so good. Perfect YA thriller. Then what happens around the 50% mark? The romance. 
the romance kicks in. And that is something I do not like in my YA thrillers. And it's something so many YA thriller authors do. When we shop, it is so annoying. It is outrageously annoying. Please, YA thriller authors, please stop doing this. Anyway, I really feel that the romance takes away from the mystery and the rest of the book is not as fast paced as the first 50%. So it just really drags in comparison to the like flash bang start. So I ended up giving this one two stars. Um, it's not my fave. And the last Megan Miranda book I'm gonna be ranking today is Come Find Me. So this follows a girl and a boy who are both having these weird, kind of paranormal, maybe space-related sci-fi type of experiences. They're experiencing an anomaly and they end up connecting on Reddit and finding each other and thinking that maybe their situations are connected because both of their brothers have recently gone missing. So they're trying to figure out if they're connected and what the hell happened to their brothers. Maybe they're still alive and trying to contact them, you know, something like that. And this suffered the same fate as The Safest Lies because the romance I, I don't know how many times I can say it don't put romance in a thriller unless it's Verity. Colleen Hoover is the only person who can put romance into a thriller. If you're not Colleen Hoover, please just consider it illegal to put romance into your thriller because it's not good. Can I make a petition for y'all to sign? Like, please stop putting romance in YA thrillers. Would y'all sign it, please? But I thought the pacing of this book was a lot better than The Safest Lies. And even though the reveals are kind of lackluster, they, they weren't horrible. So I ended up giving that one a 2.5. So now let's get into my final ranking. At the very bottom of the barrel, I'm going to put all the missing girls. I get what you were trying to do, girl, but it, the execution was not there. Then above that, I'm going to rank the safest lies. Then come find me a little bit better than that. Next is fragments of the lost. Then I would rank her newest book, The Girl from Widow Hills. Above that, I would rank The Perfect Stranger. And at the very top of the ranking, The Last House Guest. I really enjoyed and highly recommend these top three books. I think they're some of her newer ones, so maybe that just tells us that Megan Miranda is getting better and she knows what we want and it's not the YA thrillers with the romance, it's this because these two are so good. So, so, so good. If you pick up anything from this video, pick up these two books. But yeah, that is it. Let me know, you guys, if you like these author guide style videos and let me know what other authors I should do in this series. And yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, don't forget to give it an actual like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.